Ta da! Time to let that down. So I got it strapped up here. I think got some jack stands under there, but I don't really trust it. So don't ever go under it while it's like this. I'll show you how I uh, how I lower it. Do it. I like to separate the uh, knuckle from the half shaft, sway bar link, and tie rod. Then that gets to stay with the whole vehicle. It's just a lot easier. And then this thing probably weighs 1,500 pounds. I found that car dollies are the best bet. Uh, cheap Harbor Freight ones, they just end up broken in half so I couldn't handle this worked on stuff like Cavaliers but a uh, big old North Star as far as a uh, wiring goes you have to disconnect the main computer and fish this out through that little tiny hole there it's a royal pain if you've not done it before there's a uh, two nuts on the side of the computer right there there's some bracket this bracket's supposed to be easy to uh, remove but it's certainly not so which this is mounted on here with two 10 millimeters and then this is attached to the firewall with uh, I think it's an eight or a seven millimeter as for the driver's side there's um this harness which goes over to the fuse block area. You just gotta free up the, the relays. There's two seven millimeter nuts that hold on the assembly. There's a 10 millimeter that bridges there and also connects to that red harness. And you kinda undo those. And there's some brake sensors and stuff. You can disconnect those. The big pain really is you have to fish uh, and these are all new brake lines, I just did these. You have to fish those cables. They go between, they go between the engine and the frame rail and the, and, the, and the brake hoses. So you have to fish those out. I end up disconnecting this because you have to disconnect that anyways and this lets the uh, transmission cooler lines and everything come down with it. Um, fuel lines stay up here with it. This little hose is the uh, 
I used to be gotten kind of dragged down, but it attaches to that flex hose on the front of the master. And that's all you're left with. So that, there's uh, obviously the vacuum uh, hose to the booster. There is AC connector there, which just goes with the engine harness. The fan connector goes with the engine harness. The there's some stuff here that's just kind of tangled. I just disconnected it. That AC connector also goes with the harness. Um, and then that's what the two hoses look like that come to the uh, uh, back of the cooler or back of the, the heater core. Those are a pain too. I just removed the reservoir and then through a series of cussing, yelling, and prying with screwdrivers, eventually worked those loose. Don't forget about the uh, steering linkage. Um, what I do, there's a, I think it's a 12 point uh, bolt underneath there. Uh, it's an 11 millimeter. And I just kind of push the boot up out of the way. You can see it hanging there. And get in there with a long extension through the fire wall, or through the uh, wheel well. And uh, it's got Loctite on it, so you kind of have to give it a good oomph to get it free. Um, and then I go in with a pry bar right under here and just kind of bump the uh, knuckle off it and it'll slide right off. Uh, these are usually pretty easy to get loose. It's just if you forget about them, it'll yank that shaft right out and then you're really screwed. Also, um, do something to stabilize the steering on it. I just put the uh, seat belt through it and buckle it back in and that stops it from rotating when you're taking stuff out because if you uh, let it get out of center it will uh, destroy the clock spring in the wheel you don't want that that's hard to get other than that you just kind of pick away at it so what you want to do is you want to work this harness back across the engine so it's hanging across the trans Trust me, it's got a big cable that goes down above the trans. It's a big pain to get to. It's easier to uh, work this off if you're pulling the engine off the trans axle. You'll also need to make sure you get this mount down here. Let's see if I can get it to focus on it. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, there it is. There's two bolts there that hold onto the trans. One under here. It grabs onto the uh, right, uh, right down there, right down there. Uh, it grabs onto the engine block. That one will keep you from separating. And then just remember, you got a connector there. You got a connector up in there. A couple in there. One right there, and you gotta get that ground off of there. See that one right there? And yeah, you just kind of wrap it back, and then I think there's like maybe there's only three or four bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. Um, and there's one which is a pain buried down there, and then one, two up top, and then I think maybe two or three on the other side. One back under there, and then one down there. See it? And it'll come off. I had to drive a pry bar in between the block. I was prying down there. Uh, there is two guide pins, and mine were all galled up. I wouldn't let it separate. This is the second time I had the engine out, so I think it'll be easier this time. Uh, these engines are anything but leak free. Now, you'll have a connector here, which goes to the power steering switch. 
I'm going to replace that because I'm having trouble with it. It's a weird little connector. It goes in and behind. You'll also have that little connector that is down behind the like transmission bracket. And then there is uh, one more up in there. I don't know if I can get a picture of it. Oh yeah, see, there it is. That one right there, which is connected to the top of the trans. I think it's, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe the speed sensor. And then there's a ground right there as well. I've already undone it, but it bolts to the engine block. You want to come over here, and there's your EGR, and God knows what that is. I think it's a vacuum switch or something. And check this, Kate, this, when you, uh, it's a pre-molded one. I replaced it with a couple pieces of vacuum line because the original one was cracked and I had a vacuum leak there. It's kind of hard to find though. And then you kind of fish these down and around and out. And then there was one more I forgot about, which is this uh, crank position sensor in the front, I think. And then the harness is pretty much free. So you can do that. Uh, wiggle a few more of these free. And uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's out, as they say. Last but not least, don't forget this guy. He's a pain. And if you forget to plug them in later, or unplug them, you're going to be upset. I like to remove the power steering pump. It makes it easier to um, leave this with the lower half. But you got to kind of get in here and uh, pry her loose. Uh, it's hard to see, but... Okay, there, I got kind of under the foot of it. It up. There's two bolts that hold it. One there and then one down there. And you just gotta kinda keep rocking it until it pops free. Once it does, you can pull it off. You just need to undo this nut. Holds that cable on. And I think there's maybe one more. Yeah, down here as well. This one here. And then uh It'll fall off. You can lay it off to the side and uh, power steering stuff just stays with the uh, subframe. Once you have the two hose clamps released, this one here and this one down here, you just give her a wiggle and a jiggle and she's free. I done. I know this is like all kinds of sacrilege, but I just have a couple of adapters. There's a little cutout right for it, and you get on the 18 millimeter uh, bolt right in there, and out she comes. And wiggle it out, and I just kind of go in there and fish her free. One down. Uh, like four more to go. Now, if you come in here and fish this little cable out of the way, you can see the second one. There she is. And same deal. Get your agadaga set to backwards out agadagas. Fish. There you go. Push it in there. Oops, I'm not on it. There, now I'm on it. Okay, maybe you should break it loose first. Now with the regular wrench. There she goes. And since I'm impatient. Number two's out. Number three. You can just barely see it. But trust me, it's there. Third verse. Third verse. Same as the first verse. Sneak it in. Gauge it. Get 
that on it, get that on that, and crack her loose. <sighs> Those, your mileage may vary. Like I said, I've been in here about six months ago. Not even. But uh, one more. And I don't even try to really fish them out. I'll go in there with a magnet later and try to grab them. Uh, once the engine's off, the water crossover, which is this thing here, uh, will be free and you'll be able to see the top of the trans anyway, so you may as well just get it then. The last one is down here. I've already got a wrench on it, so it's right there. You can't get at it. Hey, there's that 10 millimeter I lost. Uh, you can't get at it because the trans is in the way. Uh, so you gotta use an open end. I like this ratcheting deal here. Um, you kind of just gotta find a little pocket and uh, give her to loosen her off. Uh, I usually will do like a little doubling up action. Let's see if I can get it. Nope, ain't gonna go. Big guns. Hold on, I'll get this set up. So I got one of these ratcheting wrenches on it. And uh, usually I'll just double it up like this. Oops, got set the wrong direction. On there. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do one handed. And then I give it all the beans. Oh. There. I think that's probably enough. I think I can get my hand out. Give me a second. Took a couple more tries with the the double wrench, but now it's moving. Yeah, I made this one a 15, just to mess with you. All the others are 18. I think you can actually get the in there. I'm thread it. Okay, and uh, it's out. I always put anti seize when I put these back in, uh, aluminum block and all. And then, if you look, that is a good place to pry. Um, I had a big screwdriver in there working on it on this side, and I was using a little heat on the other side. Uh, I think the dowels are right in that that ear right there. Uh, I could be wrong though. It might be lower down. I'll uh, take a picture when it's out. A little prying action here. Ooh, yep, I got lucky. It's still free. There. And you can see I got the hoist on it. And I pick it up by that bracket, that bracket which comes on the engine. Yeah, you can't really see it. Trust me, it's there. Uh, front dog bone, and then I I thread a I don't know, it's a hardened bolt I found in my junk drawer. And one of those carabiners I like. Get the good quality steel Kylock carabiners. I don't mess with the aluminum stuff. And uh, pick her up that way. So I've just got a little bit pressure on it so I can start to uh, free the transmission up. I almost forgot there is this little bracket back here which you'll need to 
disconnect and separate as well. So there's a, I think that's the uh, front, uh, what do you call it? O2 sensor. And then this one is like harness that goes up for, I think the oil pressure sensor and some other things. And then this big bad boy here is transmission and ABS, I think. So you wanna have those free. And then there's just one 10 millimeter, or maybe it's eight millimeter nut. And you can see the dowel right there, right? Like this was what was giving me grief last time. But uh, cleaned it up and sanded it, so it shouldn't be as bad this go around. Oh, I just got a screwdriver. And a wiggler free. See that gap opening up? Right here. You can't really see that well. But that's what you want. And that's how you do it. You just kind of keep working it. You do have to uh, let those bolts free. And I think there might be another one behind it I have to get to. And then uh, you have to kind of bump it over the K member. So it has to like come up. So like come up and out. Like that. So up and out. I forgot you need to remove this heat shield. That was bad, but it wasn't. There's one bolt there. There's one right there. It's just a little heat protector for that connector right there. And then the, you have to get that black black bracket out. Otherwise, the engine can't come forward, really. I think you can leave it on if you uh, get both these off. But I usually just take it off. It's really only one more bolt holding it on. I'll fish it back in later. So I uh, think it's free. And... Let's see, I got a good little gap right there. I like this old tire iron for some reason because it's a straight, a pointy bit. Get that pointy bit right in there. Give her a wiggle. I've got just a little bit of up pressure. And I'm biasing it towards the front here. Maybe that's too much. Like I'm taking some of the weight off it. I'm actually gonna jack it till the frame starts to come off the ground or off the dollies. So there she's floating just a little bit. And go over here. Oh, that was productive, see? See the flex plate? You got, like I said, you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you don't hit that. So you gotta get it high enough up. That comes off. Oil pan clears. And I think it's free. But I screwed up, so I forgot to disconnect that harness right there. So I'll have to go do that. There's a harness that goes all the way through there. And comes out here for this mess so i'll have to undo that and then i just did undid the bolts for those right there so yeah a bit of a goof uh luckily you can get those two nuts by going in on either side of this thing there and there those two and then two in the bottom all 15 millimeter and then it gives you nice clean access to the cables i forgot so I can work those free now and uh, hoist away, hopefully. There is this connector, the AC connector, there, the blue one. A little connector down there. I think that's the oil level sensor. Then you have the oil pressure sensor. You have, I think is 
a crank position sensor. And then a God knows what blue connector sensor above that. So, but you can kind of, and there's two hangers. There's a little tiny hanger here that goes uh, into the back of the AC compressor bracket right there. And then there's this little clip one here, which is, I didn't really want to fight with me. didn't want to go, but now it's free. And I just have to work it out of there between the AC compressor hoses. All right, all that worked out. I think it's free. Let's give her, see him up against the oil pan already. Bit of a wiggle. Uh, let me work on it a bit here first. I think then the original, the right way to do this is probably to uh, take the trans off separate. I don't really know how much of a pain that would be, but uh, got it on and off once without doing that, just leaving the transaxle on the subframe. I'm gonna try it again. Okay, I finally got it. Uh, I needed to do a couple things actually. First was I had to kind of support the transmission a little bit. I think you should, I let it drop too far in this picture, I should probably take it up off that. You need to have something supporting it. Uh, that's what I didn't do. That's kind of screwed me up. Uh, I'll have to fix that. And then I also took a bar and went in kind of here and then just gave the, the pan a little tweak up and it popped it forward enough that it uh, could come out. Uh, and then there was one more connector I had forgotten. It was back here. This one right here plugs into the uh, throttle position sensor. Yeah, yeah, she's free. Uh, for anyone wondering, you do need metric bolts. I just picked these ones up from the hardware store. I'll we'll have to put the put the size down in the comments. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and I used some just large hardware as spacers to give me some extra room. Uh, and yeah, bolt it up to that stand right there. I did um, grind down. You can see it here the tops of these two because it'll uh, run into the bottom of the the water crossover up here if you don't. So, and then here's a good idea of how many bolts you have to chase, right? Uh, there, this is the same pattern as like the Iron Duke, but it's not got all the bolts. One, none there. Two, three, four, five. And uh, yeah, that's all you need to get it out. And then obviously there's a brace underneath, underneath you need to get to. Uh, four torque converter bolts. Um, I replaced these with a harder grade because the ones that come with it are, are torque to yield. Uh, I have to order those from McMaster Car. I'll have to look up the grade on those and tell you guys those as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna pull it out of the way now and, and work getting the flywheel off so I can replace, I'm pretty sure it's the rear main seal that's leaking here. I, well, at least I hope so. Otherwise I got a bigger problem. I got like a, I got like a, another case leak or something that's still plaguing me. But I'm encouraged because it's wet down there. So I'm hoping it's, hoping it's dumb and it's just a rear main seal. Uh, stupid, should have done it last time I had it out and I'm paying the price, so. Yep, she burped the seal. You can see it's pushed out there. That's completely my fault. That was dumb. And she's puking. Making a big mess. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Dumb. See you guys uh, 
do the case seals. It's not that scary. Uh, I think I got it right, but I just screwed this part up. Uh, at least I hope. Definitely screwed up this seal though. You can see it's not even seated correctly. So I definitely did that wrong. Right, Layla? She didn't care. Oh well. So I figure I'll try and show you how to uh, fix this mistake. Um, need a couple of screws. These are, I like these because you want something that tapers all the way down to the end. You don't want like a self tapper or anything like that. Uh, these are just a couple of screws out of my junk drawer. These happen to be number 10s. Uh, of course, machine screws for, I think these might even be stainless. You'll need a small ish bit. I got one that's about a size smaller. So it should give me a good purchase. And then, uh, yeah, you uh, pick a spot. I like to pick a spot away from the seal, or the count the, the case, and uh, drill it in. So uh, I'm gonna pause it here so I can drill with two hands and I'll come back. Okay, so I got the first one drilled. Uh, I usually do two, two seems to work just fine. And then what you'll do is you'll start the screw, uh, get that in there and then I've got a pry bar I'll, I'll use to pull on it this way you have two you can kind of work it back and forth okay so I got both of them in there now and you can see they're just a couple threads in I just got it into the meaty bit and stopped you don't want to drill too far and you don't want to drive these up against the block um, now I'm just gonna take and this is a regular old like uh, pry bar TP I like this one because I can kind of get behind it and give it a little tug and you see it just move. Okay, there's one side. She's swinging on me. There's, there's the other side. And there you have it. If you did your job right, no major scars. Got a little ding there and a little ding there. That won't matter. But uh, yeah, I guess you can see where I screwed up, huh? Looks like I got a piece of trash in there. Must have been from the uh, silicone I added. Squeezed out. So uh, yeah, if you're redoing the case seal, uh, make sure you put this in after you uh, cock it up, crank it down, because I, I think that ex basically extruded out from between the joint. That's interesting. That was dumb. Probably was a good case seal, but then I, uh, I foobarred it up. So don't be like me. I, I guess I'd say put the seal, you know, put the case ass together. They're gonna goo out here. You probably put something, maybe some tape around the, the crank, stop it from kissing the crank. And then uh, let it firm up and then probably drive your seal in after. I wonder if I'm the only one that did this. Probably. Oh well. I'm gonna trim that up and clean it up. Okay, so I greased it up with a little bit of RTV like it says in the TSB. Uh, I got my new seal. Note this is the single piece, not like the two piece that comes in the laters. Uh, as far as I can tell, you don't upgrade. This is in the early block, this is in the 92 or 93 I think. Uh, you don't upgrade those blocks to later. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. If it leaks again, I'm just selling the car. I'm tired of pulling this engine in and out. Um, but what you want to do is you want to kind of hang it. You want to make sure first that you don't have any RTV on the crank surface. And it's nice and clean. Uh, mine doesn't look like it's got any major scoring. It's smooth, which is important. And I have a little RTV to clean up there. And then uh, you'll basically hang this on it. And I'm going to use that block of wood and a hammer to gently tap it home. It doesn't take a ton of force. There's a, there's a chamfer on the inside of this lip that gives you a little bit of start. And then it's packed with grease to uh, give it, make sure you don't have a dry start. I'm going to wipe this down with, it, with uh, brake clean on the outside rim here. Make sure it's all nice and clean. 
and then uh, probably just run a little bit of that grease along the inside leading edge so I got something to uh, to grease it as it goes in. So you can see I kind of have it hung on there. It's not pushed in flush. But the important part is that leading edge is, is sealed. I didn't roll that over. So it's got enough wiggle room that you can kind of start it. You can kind of start it. And then it uh, will allow you to move it in. Now I'm going to take that block of wood and just finish driving it home. I've got most of the way in now. And I was having trouble you kind of walking it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you kind of have to hold one side and tap on the opposite side and do kind of a star pattern. And just keep working. Eventually, it'll sit down into it. I'm almost all the way home, but uh, the hammer I was tapping it at with is, is hitting the block now. So I'm going to switch to just an extension and kind of gently finish it in till it kind of fully seats. I've had this problem before when I put the RTV on the outside of it like that. Um, I think it just, it, it loses a little bit of the grip it would normally have going in. Uh, like I said, Bolton said use, use a RTV though, so I'm using RTV here. But so far so good, it went on nice and smooth. I don't feel like it hung up or twisted or did anything stupid. Uh, so here's to hoping, I guess.